We've had some discussion on variable speeds and how to troubleshoot them. Uh, I'm going to show you today on my air handler, it's a TWE-049, on how to troubleshoot, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to start off by using Train's little circuit board that, that they will uh, sell you at a price, of course, so you can troubleshoot these motors. And basically, if you look, right now I've got the thing plugged in, and I've got LED R lit up, and I've got LED O lit up, because this is a heat pump, and it is in the cooling mode, and I've got the BK LED lit up. Now, the BK is just a, a uh, terminal for when you're using a, a two-stage scroll or a step-down scroll. And you use the BK so it'll run on low speed. The fan will run on low speed during the uh, second stage or, or first stage cooling or heating, whichever. But anyway, uh, as you can see, these LEDs are going to tell me if the, if the thermostat's connected right and if the thermostat is sending out the right signal. So I will turn this thermostat, set it down lower and there should be some kind of a delay here but it should start and these, these uh, LEDs should light up Y1 and, and Y2 should light up because I've got it set down to 74 so as you can see they lit up Y1, Y2 and of course it's going to run but the b blower isn't going to come on because I've got it disconnected I've got it connected up to this board now the little green LED that you're seeing flashing there is telling me that the board is communicating with the fan. That's all that's telling me right now at this particular point in time. Now what else this board is capable of is these little LEDs right here, these all these red ones right here. They're connected directly to the dip switches right there as you can see the dip switches are right here and they're they're connected there so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these switches on one at a time and it should light up the corresponding uh, LED on the board so let's continue and do that so here goes switch number one if I can get my little fingernail in there LED one lit LED two lit LED 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and, well, 7 I didn't quite get to move. 7 and 8. As you can see that the, that the dip switches are putting out the right signal. So, that's basically telling you that the board and all the functions on the thermostat are working correctly everything's working correctly now I do have this wire harness right here and as you can see it only has whoop, the red and the blue wires connected now it will plug directly into the module okay so I'm going to do that and I'm going to hook it up to uh, voltage in common or R and, and B on a train air handler and that should be voltage in common and I'll plug it in and I'll do the go no go test and what this will do is actually it will run the motor will tell you if the motor is any good or not so let me hook this up and and we'll get at it now basically I've got the red wire connected to red on the low voltage low voltage terminal board and the blue connected to B on the low voltage terminal board that is uh, voltage in common on the transformer and these leads go all the way up to that plug right there that plugs into the back of the module now I've also plugged in the high voltage wires to the to the motor so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the air handler in now and it should run if everything's okay And as you hear the motor, it's starting to come on. You can hear it start to run. So that is a go, no-go test. 
Now basically what this board does, it will diagnose all the thermostat connections and it diagnoses all the dip switches and it will also diagnose the motor. Make sure the motor runs. So if you got all your signals coming from your thermostat and all your signals coming from your from your uh, dip switches, that means that little board right there with the LED flashing is good. It also will tell you if the motor will run on the go no go test. The motor's good. So the board's good. The modules, uh, the motor's good. The modules no good. So that's how you troubleshoot a train using their their uh, little tool here. So I will take this apart and hook up my uh, variable speed uh, ZV-7. Okay, I got the VZ-7 hooked up and as you can see I've got a ribbon wire going into the module. I also have a ribbon wire connected to the little board that goes right there. <clears throat> and this one here has the same thing that the the train tester had on it. If you notice, the little mode light flashes from green to red. That's normal when you first fire them up. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go to it says observe and you notice if I can get this thing here to stay Notice that two lights lit, one for the R, one for the humidifier. And what we need to do next is go ahead and set this thing for a heat pump, hopefully. Let's go to control here. It's kind of hard because this thing wants to walk all over the place. And there it is, a heat pump. All I, all I did was push this button. There's off. There's something, I don't know, heating for gas heat, heat pump. So that's where we're at. We're at a heat pump. So basically, what I can do at this point here is I can light up these little LEDs here by messing around with these little dip switches. So I got all the dip switches off right now, and watch what happens when I turn them on. And then they start changing colors because those are, that's tonnage, that's one and two. 3 and 4 is CFM, adjust tap, 3 and 4 is CFM, 5 and 6 is the enhanced mode, delay tap, and then of course 7 and 8 is the heat strip tap. So basically it's telling me the same thing that the, the uh, train tester told me. They're all good. Now I can also turn on the thermostat and get this silly thing to run but I'm not going to because I want to get on to the other tests that this thing here does so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over to control and then I'm going to start going up this here's the fan now you should hear the you, you should hear the fan come on here in a second which it is now what it's telling me here is let me get this thing here set up. What it's telling me here stupid, stupid thing it's telling me that see that little LED flashing back and forth 5 and then the LED that is RPM that is CFM the other LED. So 5 times 100 that's 500 RPM and then 9 times 100, which is 900 CFM. So this thing's running at 500 RPM and it's putting out 900 CFM on just the fan mode. That's, that's half speed, basically. So let me go up one more. And this is heating, which isn't going to whoop, do anything. We want to go to cooling the big C1, which is half speed again, which should be the same numbers. 500 RPM and 900 CFM. 
400 RPM 900 CFM so I can go up one more and go to cooling two which is high speed on cooling you you should hear this motor start to ramp up as you can hear it it's starting to speed up and it's going 700 rpm and it says 1400 CFM 800 rpm 1400 CFM. Now if we watch his blower for a while, you'll, you'll notice these numbers will start jumping all around. And that's because the door's off the blower. See, there's the door, and it's, it's exposed to everything out here. So basically, if you have a tight duct system or what have you, your, your blower motor really don't know where it's at or, or what speed to run or what RPM to run or anything else. So that's the issue with, with uh, these variable speed blowers. That's the number one issue. That's how come these modules fail is because of high static pressure. Now, I will show you how to get total static pressure across the blower. It's not hard at all, but you do need a, a couple of special tools. So uh, I'll show you how to do that. Now, as far as troubleshooting goes, it's the same thing here. If all the dip switches work, all the thermostat connections work, and your RPM and your, and your CFM all works, then there's nothing wrong. Blower runs real fine. Well, it's it's also, this thing here does have a, a test for the blower right here. You can take the module off, connect this to the blower, and run the blower that way to confirm that the blower is, is good. But I'm not going to do that because that, that entails me taking this air handler apart, and I'm not interested in doing that. So, but anyway, this will conclude the... Uh, video on how to troubleshoot these things they're not hard to troubleshoot they really are especially if you have the right tool now if you don't have the right tool you can still troubleshoot it by taking the module off and ohming out the motor the motor will have the same ohmic value on all three wires and all you have to do <clears throat> is over here on this little board right here that's the communication light right there and count the blinks. The blinks will tell you how many CFM that thing is supposed to be running. And all you do is multiply that by 100. That tells you your CFM. Just that simple. And if the thing don't light up, you don't have any power connected to it, or the board's no good. I mean, it's not hard. So, uh, this concludes my tool fell, so fell onto the pan. So this concludes the video, and I'll show you how to do uh, static pressure in a minute. In order to take static pressure, you need a static pressure probe that looks just like this. So what a static pressure probe looks like. It's got two little holes on the side. You can't see them, but they're there. And you put them in there in the return side. This is right there by the blower. Got to get it through the insulation, and then it goes pointed in the direction of the air. Same thing over here on the supply side. I've got one over here on the supply side. So, as you can see, I'll show you. This is P1. P1 is the supply side. And its pressure is a 0 0.04. And then we go to the return side, if I can get it to move over. This is the return side. It's reading this one here. But I think I got the insulation in the way. As 
you can see the the pressure on my return is 0 0.02 so I've got nothing realistically on the return or the supply uh, and the reason why is because I have a three foot plenum on the return side when I moved into this house it didn't have that it was flat plated on the back so I went ahead and replaced that and got a three foot plenum and added three more returns as, as you can see they're right there on the top they're all three of them is right there to each bedroom so plus the main return in the house so there's no static pressure on this blower at all but that's how you do it you take the static pressure off the return and the static pressure on the supply now you want to do this after the coil but before the blower and right after the blower and that's what you want to that's what you want to measure and then you add them together and that's your total static pressure. Who are you expecting? Brad Pitt? George Clooney? Well, it ain't happening. Anyway, this is Larry Cole. Uh, I just did a video on variable speed and I want to talk to you about both tools that I used. Uh, the train little board that I used and the variable speed zebra that I use the the VZ-7 I believe it is but anyway uh, both tools will do the same thing is one better than the other not when it comes to uh, train equipment or American Standard equipment or Regal Benoit uh, blowers or motors and they've changed names I mean they're not Regal Benoit anymore they, they sold out but it's the old GE motors the old GE variable speeds and they both work great on the on those uh, but I would go ahead with the zebra tool for the simple fact it will do XB 13 motors it'll do uh, the York motors it'll do the Coleman motors it'll also do the outdoor variable speed motors which aren't really variable speed they're they're electronically commutated motors but they run on two different speeds but they'll also do those. So uh, in reality, uh, the Zebra is a, a more versatile t tool. Now, uh, you're going to have to buy some attachments to them, and those attachments aren't all that expensive. I think they're $50 or something like that, but, but realistically, it's, it's really not that expensive. If you want to get into troubleshooting variable speed motors, uh, they're coming they're here they've been here for for 15 20 years and they're not going away so it's either like I like I tell everybody it's either get on board or get out of the way one of the two so it's up to you anyway uh, I just thought I'd throw that in there at the end of this video so you guys would would know uh, in reality both tools do a good job so thanks for watching